Father and our God, we bless you. We worship your name. We magnify you. Thank you for today. Thank you for this evening. Thank you for another time of Bible study. The Bible says your word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my heart. The entrance of your word gives light, gives understanding to the simple. Daddy, as we go into your word this evening, I ask that you speak to us. I ask that you speak through me. I ask that you speak to me. I ask that you speak to all of your children all over the world listening. And at the end of the day, when you bless us, you take all the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Daddy, I ask that all of the blessings you have packaged for us in this period, they will be ours in the name of Jesus. Thank you, King of glory. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God, this evening, I'm going to be talking about activating your blessings activating your blessings in brackets, sowing and reaping. Our text today will be taken from Genesis chapter 8 from verses 15 to 22. Genesis 8, 15 to 22. And I read, And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife, and thy sons, and thy sons' wives with thee. Verse 17, bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee, of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. Verse 18, and Noah went forth, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. Verse 19, every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, 
and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kind went forth out of the ark. And Noah builded an, an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Verse 21. And the Lord smelled the sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. Verse 22. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, and summer and winter and day, and night shall not cease. May God bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Today I just want to talk briefly about the principle of sowing and reaping. I know there are so many theology around this, I will probably never finish it if I start. But I want to tie it with how you can sow and reap and activate your blessings. To start with, what is blessing? And I will stand on the definition given by our Father in the Lord, which says, the spiritual definition of a blessing is a summon to forces, all forces on earth, in heaven, underneath the earth, to come to the aid of someone so that the fellow will succeed and excel. It means in whatever you are doing, all forces available in heaven, on earth, underneath, everywhere that will aid you. So if you need to plant, God will summon rain such that it will come in moderate way. You will not have a hurricane that will destroy all your farms. That is what we're talking about. Praise the Lord. We need God's blessing so that we can progress in life. If we want to move forward, we need to be blessed. If we want to live struggle and attain the purposes for which God created us, we need blessings, not miracles. We cannot live our day every day on miracles. It means we'll always be falling into disaster and needing bailouts. But we need the guaranteed blessings of God so that we can move away from a life of perpetual crisis to a life filled with Christ's deeds. Today, I want to scratch the surface about how we can activate our blessing through sowing. To sow is to give out something. It could be a seed, literally. You want to get maize, you have to plant it. You need yam, you have to plant it. A seed can be money. You can give someone money. You can help a ministry. You can help a man. You can train up a child. You can help a business. You can be that angel investor. Sowing could be time. It could be talent. You could sing for God. You could construct things. Sowing could be help. Sowing could be interceding. You could pray for people. You can have a burden in your heart and you lift up your voice in prayer on behalf of others. As a matter of fact, God commanded that we should intercede for leaders, for our leaders. Sowing can be giving thanksgiving and praise to someone or to God. To reap is to take back, is to produce to reap is to get wealth, increase, money, fame. But I'm happy about the last verse that I read there, that the Bible says as long as the earth remained, seed time, harvest time, they would never cease. As long as we are in the earth, sowing and reaping are assured. Because they are a means of exchange. As a matter of fact, you need more of sowing and reaping than money. Because when you understand the principle of sowing and reaping, you will find that, that money is just a part of what you sow. Praise the Lord. 
If you desire to reap a harvest of any kind, it has to be preceded by sowing the relevant seed required. You cannot rear goats and expect a cow. You cannot plant maize and expect yam. Our lifetime is a sowing time. And each of us, by the things we do, by our thoughts, by our actions, by our words, we are constantly planting and sowing to reap for the future. Looking at our Bible text, I want to talk briefly about, I think, about four key points from what happened there. From the story of Noah. God just finished destroying the earth. They've been on the waters for days. And now God is telling Noah, come out. And when God was telling him, come out, God blessed them and all of that. So the first point I see here around this story as it relates to sowing, and you see how tied to sowing, is the fact that there was an instruction from God. And a blessing was proclaimed. So there was an instruction from God and a blessing was proclaimed. God told Noah in verse 15, and God said unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee, of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. There was an instruction. There is always an instruction. Either by direct words of instruction, by inspiration, by word of knowledge, by inference. There is always an instruction for you to activate your blessings. The problem is, do you hear such instructions from God? Do you have a relationship with him to hear when he's talking to you? Either through his servants, through his words, in prayer in fasting, in waiting, through the works of your hands, through the experiences you are going through. Remember, there is always an instruction. That was why the Bible said in Psalm 40 verses 1 and 2, Psalm 40 verses 1 and 2, it says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. I waited patiently. He inclined unto me. He heard my cry. He gave those instructions. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit and out of the miry clay and set my feet upon the rock and established my goings out. My brothers and sisters developed the ability to receive instructions for God. You want to activate your blessings? Hear from him. Develop your relationship with God today. And you will start to receive instructions for him. The second point I have here is that the instruction was obeyed. You know, God told Noah, you and your family move out of the ark. And when he told them, move out, move your families, your wives, your children, and their wives, and all the animals. God did not stop there. God proclaimed a blessing upon them. Say, be fruitful and multiply. Just like he did in the beginning. Because this was a sort of a new beginning for man anyway. In verse 18, what did we see Noah do? The Bible says, and Noah went forth and his sons and his wife and his son's wives with him. Verse 19, every beast, every creeping thing and every fowl and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds went forth out of the ark. Noah carried out the instruction. You want to activate blessings from your life. You have ins received instruction. You have received inspiration. You have direction. Obey and carry out those instructions. For us to go far with God and achieve our purpose, we must live a life of obedience. Has God inspired you to do something? 
It might seem foolish to men, but please go ahead and do it. You know, when Prophet Samuel was talking to Saul, in 1 Samuel, I think that was 17 verse 22, he said, and Samuel said, has the Lord great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as obeying the voice of the Lord? He says to obey is better than sacrifice. And to hack in, to put your mind, to hear and to do, understand, carry out, is better than the fat of rams. We must obey. We must not just obey. Our obedience must be total and it must be continuous. And I will explain. You know, when God spoke to Noah, build the ark. It was just like everybody on Body Thomas here. Noah was like any other regular guy that received instruction. Build an ark. God gave him the dimensions. Imagine how people would have laughed at him. You are insane. What are you doing? All of these resources, you waste it away. You are not even by the seashore. You are building an ark on the ground. What will you do with it? Will it have wheels? But Noah obeyed. Noah built the ark. After he finished building the ark, after many days and years, God told him when to go in. Imagine if Noah had given in to say, you know what, I've been building this thing all this while. I've not seen any rain. I've not seen cloud. I've not seen anything. I'm tired, God. But Noah continued to obey. He entered into the ark. Continuous obedience. God shut the door of the ark. God sent down rain, sent down flood, took over the whole earth. The ark started floating. No one knew the ark was floating. And after a while, and when the waters were drying, God said, come out of the ark. With the animals. With your family. Noah obeyed again. Continuous obedience. He came out of the ark with his wives, with his children and their wives, and with the limited number of animals surviving in the whole world. Obedience should not be like a light switch that we can decide to turn on and off when we like. Obedience to God and his instructions should be complete, total, and continuous. And that is when we activate our blessings in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Then the third point I want to talk about is actually the principle of sowing that Noah applied here. In Genesis chapter 8 verse 20, Noah did something very profound. You know, I've been taking us through the fact that he obeyed God. He heard from God. He obeyed God. Not once, not twice. Continuously obeyed God. But he did something in verse 20, which was not part of the instruction said that God gave him. In Genesis chapter 8 verse 20, the Bible says, And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Noah applied the principle of sowing and giving back to God. Noah was thanking God for saving himself, his family, and the limited animals. Mind you, at this point in time, Noah had limited resources like a lot of us do. Actually, economist tells us that wants are unlimited, means are limited. So Noah had limited resources. He had fewer people to call upon. He had fewer animals to play with. Noah, apart from having limited resources, gave of the best of those animals unto God. The Bible says he gave of the clean beast, not the dirty beast, not the crumpled beast, not the crumpled notes, not the leftover from your pockets. 
He gave of the clean fowl. Noah gave of his best. He gave of his all. What are you giving back to God? Because every act of sowing is actually giving unto God. You might see a man that you are giving to, but you are giving unto God. How do I know? Because the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17, He that had pity upon the poor, lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he had given, will he pay him again. And that's why we read that text every time it says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Noah gave from his limited resources. He gave of his best. He gave of his all. You want to activate the blessings of God upon your life today. Practice sowing. And not just sowing. Sowing from your needs. Sowing from your limited resources. Sowing with all you have. Do you know these days we have to preach and preach and convince for people to give offering, to pay tithes, when there are blessings and benefits associated with them, when there are promises associated with them. Do you practice sowing? Do you practice giving? Can you by wisdom just look at what Noah did and practice it and activate the blessings of God upon your life? And quickly, what were the results that we saw from that principle that Noah practiced? You know, actually when you hear from God and you obey God, there are rewards for them actually. Because a man can say, what do you mean if God instructs me and I'm obedient, does that mean he will not bless me? Is that not enough for me? <laughs> he will bless you. You will have something. But what did Noah get that should make us practice sowing and reaping the right way? Verse 21 and 22 is the key. And the Lord smelt a sweet savour, And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore everything living as I have done. Number one. Verse 22. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. When God smelt that burnt offering, God released a new set of blessings. God vowed that he would not destroy the earth the way he had done again. And God guaranteed the continuous success of Noah and blessing on Noah and by extension, mankind. If Noah had not sold, he would probably have been blessed. But God would never have said seed time and harvest time and winter and heat and cold will never cease. In essence, God moves his blessing from just wealth and create wealth and plenty for the now to a legacy of wealth. Of what use is wealth without a legacy? By hearing from God, by obeying instructions, preserve this life. Ensure they had life. Ensure they had something to eat. But by sowing unto God of his best, ensure that he had something to live for generations after him. When you sow and you practice the principle of sowing and reaping, you leave a legacy for generations. 
it is much more than the wealth you get for the now. That truly is blessing. When you have more than enough, not just for you and the now, but for your generations to come, that truly is blessing. Those only come in the place of sowing. I know some people might ask me, yes, we've been sowing, I have not been reaping. Well, check yourself. God said, that principle says we should sow and we should reap. God will not come and reap for us as God will not come and sow for us. As we sow aggressively, we should reap aggressively. Put our self in the places where we will benefit from our sowing. If there is a new knowledge to be obtained, get it. Be bold. Launch out. You receive instructions. Do them. And reaping will be your portion in Jesus' name. In summary, I just we, we've looked at blessings from God. And we said blessing is summoned, summoning all the forces in heaven and the earth and everywhere to help you. But we've said that to activate your blessings, you have to hear from God always. Because Noah heard that instruction. And you don't stop at hearing instructions, but you have to obey instructions continuously because Noah demonstrated a series of continuous obedience. He built the ark, he moved into the ark, he came out of the ark with the family and the animals. He launched out. But he didn't stop there. We also said that we should, by faith, sow in obedience. Because the sowing activated a legacy for Noah and by extension from man. Are you there listening to me today and you want to activate God's blessings upon your life that you can leave a legacy behind? My first question to you is this. Can you hear God? Can you receive instructions from him? Do you have a relationship with him such that when he's speaking to you, you know? If my wife calls my name, if you blindfold me, I will know he's my wife. I stuck in. Because there's a relationship. If my children are calling me to say something, even if you blindfold me and put me somewhere, I will know my children are talking to me. Because there is a relationship. I can discern their voice. Can you discern the voice of God? For you to have a deep and a good relationship with God today, you need to give your life to Jesus. You need to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Only then can you begin to hear instructions that you can obey. Only then can you begin to sow that you might activate your blessings and your legacy. So I want to encourage you, if you are there listening to me today, and you are not yet born again, now is a good time to give your life to Jesus. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. And we can just do it quickly by saying a short prayer. By faith, you are saved. So if you're there, you want to give your life to Jesus, I just want to encourage you to say these prayers with me. I'd say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I confess all my sins. I acknowledge that I am wrong and I repent from them. I also promise that I will not go back to them. Please forgive me all my sins. I confess you as my Lord and Savior and wash me with your blood. Thank you for forgiving me. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have said those prayer points, my brothers and sisters, I rejoice with you because right now you are born again. You have been washed with the blood of Jesus and you have put yourself in a position to hear from God, to obey him and to activate, to sow and to bring down your blessings in the name of Jesus. And I just want to encourage you that you, 
you continue to fellowship with us as we are online until the restrictions is fully lifted. We are at plot 101 Babs Animal Shaun Road, Body Thomas in Surulere. But you follow us online, and if you are far away from us, wherever you are, look for a Bible-believing church so that you can be fed the word of God. You know more about God, and you can activate your faith and your blessings, and God will bless you in the name of Jesus. For the others, I think it's a good time to pray unto God. And I just want to encourage us to take these few prayer points. Say, Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you for your word today, your word that has gone forth. I thank you, I bless you. Because you want me to activate eternal blessings, to have a legacy that will be created to generations. Thank you for that word. In Jesus' name, I pray. Say, Father, please help me to wait on you so that I can hear from you. Father, please help me to wait on you so that I can hear from you. Help me to wait on you, to receive instructions from you. I don't need information from men. I need instructions and revelations from you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. Say, Father, please give me the grace to always obey you. Continuous obedience. Let it be my portion in the name of Jesus. The same way Noah obeyed you, all true. Father, give me the grace. I I will not be weary. I will not be tired. I will continuously obey you in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, please give me the grace to sow. I need the grace to sow in plenty, in want, in lack, in need. Help me to sow. Help me to sow that that will transform my life, that will activate all of your blessings for me, that will help me to live a legacy for generations behind coming after me in the name of Jesus. The grace to sow, to sow continuously to so always grant unto me in the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray and say Father as I sow help me to harvest. Help me to harvest and leave a legacy behind in the name of Jesus. As I sow I will harvest. Father you are not the sower. You are not the harvester but you are the one that enabled the growth because the Bible says Paul planted, Apollos watered but God gave the increase. Your job is to give us the increase as we sow. Help me as I sow. I will also harvest. I will also reap. I will not leave them undone. I will reap my benefits in the name of Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think it's a good time for us to give our offering now. We just learned the principle of sowing that will help us to activate our blessings. It's a good time to begin to activate those blessings. So you want to give offering, you want to give your tithe, you want to give a seed. There is a cause you are passionate about that we do, you want to support. The account numbers are on the screen. You can sow onto it and God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Please follow the instructions on the screen. And the hand of the Almighty God will touch you in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for your children that are sowing right now by giving their offerings, by giving their tithes, by giving their seeds. Father, please receive it. Receive them. Bless them. And let it be well with them. Father, by reason of these offerings, by reason of this tithe, by reason of these seeds, O oh Lord, cause their blessings to come that will extend beyond them to more generations after them in Jesus' name. Thank you, King of glory. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Quickly, before we share the grace, I want to encourage us to stay safe in this period. Observe all the directives as given by the Ministry of Health, the Lagos State Government, the CDC. They have told us restrictions will be lifted on places of worship by the 21st. Look out for more instructions on our website from our various church groups on how we we'll moderate and comply with those instructions. God will bless you as you do in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. Thank you because our blessings are released unto us. Lord, please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. As we go, we ask that you'll be with us. Let your hand be upon us. Keep us from evil. Keep us safe. 
and let it be well with us. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And we say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. <music>